Let me uh, start by differentiating between denial of the Holocaust and distortion of the Holocaust. Denial of the Holocaust is basically saying that the moon is made out of white cheese. I mean, it's just denying facts that are proven by millions of documentation uh, pages and uh, hundreds of thousands of interviews with both with uh, survivors and with uh, participants, uh, victims and bystanders and so on. So denial uh, also means to say that the Germans never intended to kill the Jews. Denial also means to say that uh, there were not millions of victims, but uh, a few thousand uh, who died during the war, like everybody else died during the war because of the war. That's denial. In the West, the denial has become a marginal issue, except in America. In America, there is still uh, uh, denial by uh, right-wing uh, racists, white racists who accuse the Jews of inventing the Holocaust and whose real aim is not only the Jews but also black people and uh, generally democratic structures. But that's a marginal issue, basically. The reason why it has become a mar marginal issue is because in 1999 and 2000, early 2000, in London there was a trial of uh, a very famous uh, academic, Jewish academic, American academic. Her name is Deborah Lipstadt. She wrote in one of her books that a well-known English Holocaust denier, er, David Irving, was an anti-Semite and he invented things and uh, he denied the Holocaust and so on. And Irving uh, accused her of, the, of uh, a false accusation against him. And uh, this libel suit that he brought was held in London in front of a British court. Now, the lawyers of uh, Deborah Lipstadt decided not to put her on the stand. She was just sitting there. She was the accused because it was a libel suit against her. Instead of calling witnesses, uh, the lawyers called experts, historians, all of them non-Jews, so that the, uh, David Irving couldn't accuse uh, these people of being uh, biased because they were Jewish. These were non-Jewish experts. Chief of them was uh, perhaps uh, Christopher Browning from the United States, but there were several others. And in a long session of uh, long sessions of uh, interview of uh, statements at the court, David Irving tried to show that the Holocaust never happened. And instead of uh, arguing with him, these experts simply uh, showed the documentation. And this was perfectly clear. At the end of the trial, the British judge. Lord Justice Gray decided that uh, Irving was a liar, not a historian, that he was an anti-Semite, that he, that he was totally unreliable, and that the Holocaust was a fact that could not be denied. This judgment statement uh, actually did away in the West with the denial of the Holocaust to a very large extent. Now, in, in the West, then, we have the uh, work against the denial by legal means. In uh, the Arab world, in the Muslim world, this is not the case. In the Muslim world, denial of the Holocaust was, and to a, to a large extent still is, a uh, sort of thing that is common, consensual, with the people who believe in, in these things. The intellectual elite in the Islamic world tended to say that the Holocaust never happened, was invented by the Jews in order to squeeze money from poor Germany to, 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 to establish a Jewish state in Palestine. Uh, now, this has been going on for a long time. 
But the denial of the Holocaust has now been challenged in the Muslim world. And an increasing number of um, liberal Muslims, especially in the Arab Muslim world, this is a, oh, the Muslim world includes not only Arabs, but especially in the Arab world, there's a growing number of important intellectuals, including religious people, clerics, Islamic clerics, who go out against the denial of the Holocaust. So in, there is a movement, a, a positive movement, one could say, to meet and combat the denial of the Holocaust in the Arab and Muslim world. This is not a one uh, war. This is a struggle that's going on, especially in countries which have now um, established relations with Israel and where Jews were not really persecuted in a large way, or not at all. Uh, countries like the Ro Morocco, for instance, where the denial of the Holocaust has gone down tremendously, and the uh, identification with the suffering of the Jews during World War II is something that is common in, in, among many intellectuals in Morocco. But it's not only in Morocco, also in other places. Also in places which are not Arab, Muslim, but not Arab, such as the 180 million Muslims in India, for instance, where a very important uh, intellectual, a, a leader of the Islamic world in India, he's my age, Mulana <laughs> Mulana Vahiduddin Khan is his name, lives in uh, New Delhi. He came out against the radicals, against the denial of the Holocaust, also of other things. And he is, is an example of the struggle against the denial of the Holocaust in the Muslim world. There are these struggles, but to go back to the Western world, Europe, America, uh, South America as well as North America, uh, you have a, a weakening, a strong, I would say, re, uh, regression, a retreat from the denial of the Holocaust. So it's, in the West, it's a, it's a marginal issue. Instead of the denial of the Holocaust, we are faced with a tremendous problem. We call it distortion. Distortion doesn't deny that the Holocaust happened. The social says, the Germans did it, not we, whoever the we are, Poles or Lithuanians or Ukrainians or Slovaks or whoever. It's not we, it's they. And the Jews, in any case, were partly responsible for the tragedy because the Jews established Jewish councils under, in the Holocaust which collaborated with the Germans, and the Jews were led to the trains that brought them to the extermination camps, largely by Jewish police. And this is a distortion, a distortion of the facts. Now, why, do, why does the distortion happen? Because World War II is of tremendous importance to the world at large. Anything that you touch today in politics, in economics, in social relations, goes back to World War II, to the 35 million or more people who, who died in Europe, to 60 million people or so who died in, in, in the East. The, the uh, World War II is a major constituent of uh, consciousness, social consciousness, political consciousness, cultural consciousness of the world today. And within the memory of World War II, the Holocaust stands up as a kind of pillar of fire in the midst of this tragedy. To deny the Holocaust is impossible because it happened, it was very clear. So you say, well, yes, it happened, it was terrible, it was awful. Not we, only the Germans. Not only that, in order to say this, you have to reinvent history. 
you have to deny that what happened happened. Not the denial of the facts of the Holocaust, but a denial who participated. Now here we have a very clear and very major problem because Nazi Germany could do so much, but without the participation, without the cooperation, collaboration of minorities, sometimes majorities, of the population and the leadership in the countries that were conquered by Germany or were influenced by Germany, without the help of these uh, factors, the Germans couldn't have done what they did. Without the help of the French police, they could not have rounded up the Jews and sent them to the east. Without the Dutch police, they couldn't have put them in camps to be transported to the extermination camps. Without the Polish police, which was under German control, they could not have done that. The, the um, uh, anti-Semitism that flourished in parts of the population, in some places more, in some places less, was a uh, very important help for Nazi Germany uh, to do what we call the Holocaust, that is, the genocide of the Jewish people. Now, here we have a very clear problem. You don't deny that the Holocaust happened. You just say, uh, one, the Germans did it, two, the Jews collaborated in different ways. Now, is, that, is there some truth in that? Yes, there is some truth in that. Because the, uh, uh, the Germans certainly killed uh, most of the Jews in, 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 were killed in the Holocaust were killed by Germans. But not only by Germans, also by collaborators in various places. You have the fact that Jewish police did help the Germans to, to push the Jews into the trains to the extermination camps. But if they didn't do it, they would be killed. Polish police collaborated with the Germans. French police collaborated with the Germans. And here you have a very major issue. The issue is not only the, the, the distortion of the facts in Western Europe and Central Europe, but mainly and purposely so in Eastern Europe, especially in the area that was Poland before 1939. Out of the... Uh, not quite uh, six million Jews who were killed in the Holocaust. Three million were Polish Jews. In other words, Jews who lived in Poland, independent Poland before 1939. Three million, the majority. So what happened in Poland is crucial to what we are discussing here. It's not only Poland, it's also Lithuania and Romania and other places. But Poland is very important. Poland is central. And here we have a fact which was not clear years ago and which today is more and more clear to everyone who wants to know. Polish historians, liberal Polish historians, not Jews, Poles, found detailed accounts of the five to six percent of the Jews who escaped being transported to the extermination camps in Polish ghettos. About five, six percent, perhaps some 200,000, perhaps a bit more. You don't know the exact figures. Impossible to find out the exact figures. Now, where did these people go? They could hide only ultimately, well, obviously, in uh, hiding places in the ghettos, but they couldn't maintain themselves there. They had to hide amongst the Polish population. Now, the Polish population was anti-Semitic in the majority, not all of them, in the majority. And Polish historians have found in detailed research, very detailed research, that roughly about 200,000 Jews who tried to escape 
the Nazi German threat, were killed. Almost all of them, about 40,000 40, survived, but 200,000, about 200,000, were delivered to the Germans to be killed, or were killed by Polish peasants, or were handed over to the Polish police who handed them over to the Germans to be killed. This is participation, active participation of parts, large parts of the Polish population. And the documentation is very clear, including the documentation of the Polish underground, the armed underground. The armed underground did not help the Jews. Uh, after all, the Jews were transported in large parts, not all of them, I mean, two million Jews were killed by bullets on, in, in ghettos and so on, and led out of the ghettos into pits. But those who were transported to the extermination camps were transported by rail, by railways, in Poland and out of Poland into Poland, into Poland, from the West, from Western Europe, from Southern Europe, and so on. Not one case of a derailment of a transportation train with Jews by any of the underground, certainly not by the Polish underground, but not by any underground either. There was one railway that was derailed, one train that was derailed in Belgium. It was derailed by a Jewish underground body, a group of Jews, armed Jews, who derailed a train, and hundreds of Jews managed to escape. That was the only case. There was no help by anyone. There was no, part, no uh, attempt by undergrounds in France, Belgium, Slovakia, Poland, anywhere, Lithuania, to uh, derail the trains that were leading the Jews. And they knew where the trains were going. In Poland, certainly they knew. They had information. They knew that the trains were arriving at the place and without the people, and people, and then went out without the people who had been on them, that the people were killed there in those centers. And there was no attempt, none whatsoever, to derail the trains. Now that is hidden. People deny it. This is true of the present Polish government to a large extent. This is also true of uh, radical anti-Jewish uh, intellectuals who try to hide these facts. And what ha one has to emphasize all the time is that the facts, as they actually happen, were found out by liberal Polish historians, not by Jews, not by Israelis. And the uh, distortion that happens there it is not only a distortion of Jewish memory, but a distortion of memory generally, a distortion of European culture, of a liberal approach to society and history. And uh, Ira is devoted, in fact, to a liberal interpretation because Ira wants openness, it wants education, it wants remembrance, it wants research. Ira is against the distortion because it distorts not only Jewish history, it distorts general history. Not only Jewish society is distorted, but general society is distorted. Let me give you an example, a very clear example. The uh, World War II was, uh, as people learn in schools and so on, the result of a Nazi initiative. Nazi Germany wanted a war. Why did they want a war? They were not suffering from any economic disadvantages because they had overcome the economic crisis. Uh, nobody was threatening Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany was threatening others. 
And we have a document by Hitler, the only memorandum Hitler wrote or dictated himself from August 1936, in which he says very clearly to his number two, Hermann Göring, he says, you have to prepare Germany for war because our main enemy is Bolshevism. And the only aim of Bolshevism is to have Jews control the world. That's the only purpose of Bolshevism. In other words, Bolshevism is a Jewish invention. It's run by Jews. It wants to establish Jewish control over the world. Therefore, we want to have a war. So you have anti-Semitism as a major factor in, in the outbreak of World War II. And World War II, in Europe alone, caused some over 35 million casualties. Of these, a few million were Jews. But at least 29 million, and probably many more, were non-Jews. And these non-Jews died, to a large extent, because of anti-Semitism. Now, when you deny that, you distort that, you hide that. This is distortion. And this distortion, as I say just now, is a distortion not just of Jewish history, because the Jews are, after all, a very small minority in the world. Today, some 15 million out of 7.5 billion people in the world. It is a danger to society generally, because it creates a world that never was. And that is really an analysis of distortion. Distortion creates a, a useful past. What is a useful past? A past that is useful for the nationalists, for the ones who want to uh, continue, in actual fact, anti-Semitic policies. And this idea of a useful past is not only in Poland, it is in other places as well. And the distortion takes different forms. I concentrated on Poland, but Poland is just one example, although a very major one. But for instance, in Hungary, the Germans controlled Hungary from, uh, in, from March 1944 on. But the people who were engaged in persecuting Jews were a small group of uh, Gestapo and SS people, about 150 people under the leadership of uh, Adolf Eichmann. And they could not act without the help of the local authorities, of the gendarmes, the policemen, of the uh, various uh, officials, of the ministries, and without the collaboration of large parts of the population. And here you have another point. Both in Poland and in Lithuania and in Hungary and in some other places, what was left behind? What was left behind was the property of the Jews. And the few people who survived when they came back, they were a threat to the people who had taken their property because they wanted their property back. And the people who took the property, whether of the people who survived or the large, very large number who did not survive, they wanted to keep the property. It was a question of greed. It was a question of, of having the, uh, the, the clothes, or the, the dwelling places, the uh, equipment, the factories, the shops, and so on and so forth, taken by the non-Jewish people who enjoyed the fact that the Jews were destroyed. And when you deny that, it's a distortion of the past. When you uh, justify that in some way, it's a distortion of the past. Again, not just the Jews are hit by this distortion, because the Jews are, after all, as, as I said just now, a very tiny minority. It destroys the culture in which anti-Semitism grows. It destroys the possibility 
of a uh, liberal, uh, humanistic society. Whether you talk about Eastern Europe or Western Europe or Northern Europe or Southern Europe. And this is very crucial because it is there that the Holocaust comes uh, with its two characteristics. On the one hand, it's a singular thing against the Jews. The Jews were the victims. Anti-Semitism was anti-Jewish, obviously. But uh, this was also a universal thing, not only specific. Because the Jews are people amongst other people. And when you turn against them, you turn against humanity. You turn against everyone. When you distort the past in order to create something that is useful to you politically and socially, you in fact destroy the basis of your own culture. So the question of distortion is not as a question of Jews, it's not a question of the Holocaust as though that was not enough. It's a question of general human civilization. And I think that we have to concentrate on that we have to say very clearly to all, not just to the 35 members, governments that are members of IRA at the moment. We have to tell the world what we are dealing with is a Jewish thing, yes. But IRA is not a Jewish organization. IRA is a general organization. And the vast majority of the IRA experts and so on are not Jews. We are dealing with a general human problem. The Jews are people, and they are the victims. And because they are people, they are like everybody else. And, be and because of that, the distortion of the past is a distortion of human culture generally. So I think that this is a question of distortion. It's not only that. When you distort the past, you also destroy your own culture because it means that you cannot face the problems of your culture. It means that you hide it. It means that you want to do away with it, cover it over. You can't cover it over. Ultimately, it comes up. And therefore, the question of distortion is so very crucial to the... Uh, uh, not only to the work of IRA, but to the work of any body that wants to advance human civilization in general. Thank you.